Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel, welcome to another GT Sport race and driving tips video. In this one, we're going to ask a very simple question, and that is, what is strategy? We're going to talk about strategy, what it actually means in sim racing or motor racing, and then we're going to take a look at a few examples later on in the video where we kind of apply some strategy to get a result, and also look at sometimes why strategy, even though you think it should work, just doesn't. So yeah, what is a strategy in motorsport? Well, put simply, the aim of any strategy in motorsport is to give you the opportunity to drive at your fastest for the longest period of time in the race. So very often, when we do the strategy guide videos, we talk about the optimal strategy. Uh, if there's a kind of choice of tyres, soft and mediums, for example, we kind of the optimal strategy is simply the point at which you pit where the tyres will be at their best for the longest in the race. So essentially if you start on soft tyres, you want to be pitting on the lap where the medium tyres will actually be faster than your wooden soft tyres. But very often the optimal strategy is not the best strategy for most drivers on the grid. And there are many, many, many reasons why that is the case, but most of the time the reason the optimal strategy doesn't work for most drivers or is not the best strategy for most drivers is because of the other cars on the grid. So you can control your own driving, you can control your own lap times, you are in control of what tyres you start on, but you're not in control of what all the drivers around you are going to be doing. So very often in the midfield you're going to get involved in some battle with other drivers or drivers making mistakes in front of you or even behind you. So they maybe cost you a little bit of lap time. So anything that's out of your control it's costing you lap time, it's probably going to be impacting your strategy as well. So, in terms of what you want to be doing in those circumstances, you're really just trying to find the best strategy that gives you as little interference as possible from other drivers. Very often you want to be asking yourself the question, am I losing more time fighting with these drivers around me in the early stages than I would be at the end of the race on worn tyres? If the answer to that question is yes, then you really should be considering pitting early, going for the undercut, getting some clear traffic and then kind of dealing with the pain at the end. The strategy, if you're going to go for anything other than the optimal strategy, does always carry a little bit of a risk. It can sometimes not work. We will look at an example of going for the optimal strategy and it just does not work out for us. But the first race we're going to look at is we end up in a situation where it looks like it's going to go really badly. We take a big risk on the strategy and it actually works out for a fairly decent result. So that race we're looking at now was a daily race at C at the Bathurst in the Group 3 machinery. We're in it, the Jaguar, we're starting P9, but there's been a little bit of a glitch at the start. It looks like P6 or somewhere along there has not moved off the line. And you can see all the other cars have caught up. It's an absolute mess at the beginning. Everybody just ramming each other off. Cars going round at the back. We're in a big pack of cars here for around about six. It's going to be a very, very messy first lap because of this. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. When you see that kind of first corner there or last corner as everyone was uh, kind of fighting for position, I think we have the answer as to why we don't have a very close rolling starts because it looks like drivers can't quite control themselves in those situations. You can see, obviously, the cars here are a lot closer together than they would be in a normal daily race C start. And there's going to be a lot of fighting as we go up over the mountain. Of course, the mountain, not really a place for overtaking. You have to be very mindful of the cars in front of you. It very much as a single file through the majority of it. We've got a car around there okay, coming up the uphill hairpin. So we've got a big fight going up ahead of us here. You're going to see the result of two cars trying to go side by side through the mountain. We have a massive accident unfold in front of us. Thankfully, we don't really get caught up in it too badly, but these two drivers in front of us, the two Corvettes, are still at it. It's going to be a lot of a collision here. We're going to have to slow down, hit the brakes. Another Corvette comes flying up the inside of us, doing a bit of wall riding. All very, very messy stuff. And I'm fast sort of starting to think at this point, I do not want to be involved in this any more than I have to be. These guys are going to fight like cats and dogs. I'm maybe going to have to try and do something a little bit uh, extreme here on the strategy. Now the strategy for this one in terms of the optimal strategy was to if you started in the soft tyres, do five laps in the soft tyres, four laps in the mediums. 
or if you started in the medium tyres, three laps in the mediums, six laps on the soft. Some people were going for four laps in the mediums. I thought lap three was a better one to stop in. Now at this point, I kind of had changed my mind a little bit. It looked like things had sorted themselves out, but then drivers a couple of cars ahead, they go very slow out the chase. I can see these three cars are very close together and we decide, yep, we are actually going to pit here. So let's just take a look at the four cars in front of us because these are the drivers that I'm going to try and beat in this race. So we've got the Hungarian Biggie Boy, we've got the Spaniard Alex Towers 79, the French driver Mila, and just coming up to Murray's corner, we've got Kira. We'll just call him because I or she, because I can't actually say that name properly. So that's the four drivers that I'm immediately on the racetrack with. And that's the four drivers that I'm going to try and beat using this little bit of an extreme strategy. So we're going to put at the end of lap one and actually do eight laps on the soft tyres. So we come out of the pits now. Lovely clear track in front of us. Now we did actually stream this race live. So I did say to the viewers that were watching at the time that I've never done 8 laps on the soft tyres but we will have to go very easy on the out lap and very easy on our first couple of flying laps just to make sure we've got some kind of tyre life towards the end of the race. Uh, I think the most I've done on the soft tyres, I had done 7 laps previously. Uh, definitely not in the Jaguar, that was in the Hyundai. But we were taking a little bit of a risk here because we knew we were going to be very vulnerable on the tyres at the end of the race. So let's take a look at the drivers that we're going to be fighting with and see what kind of shenanigans they're getting up to. Did we make the right call? So you can see they're fighting there into Murray's corner at the end of lap number two. A little like they've got themselves sorted out a little bit. The lap time's gone up there. 203s, 0.9, maybe around about a second slower than we'd ideally be wanting to be run at that time in the race. You really should be kind of doing maybe a sort of high... Uh, two minute twos, low two threes on the medium tyres at the beginning of the race. This is uh, the top split lobby at the time, so these are mostly A plus drivers, I believe. Again, we've got a little bit of fine going up here into turn at number two, a bit of contact there. This is all good, this is all what I was expecting to happen. It's all the sort of stuff that I would be involved in as well. I'd be getting held up by these drivers fighting and doing very, very similar lap times to them, obviously, as well. So again, we've got more overtaking come down here into the chase. Fairly clean, decent overtake, but again, definitely not the fastest way to do it. And then one lap later, we have a bit of deja vu because we have the exact same two drivers making the move into the chase. Again, definitely not the fastest way for these drivers to be driving. Let's take a look back at ourselves. So those drivers there were doing sort of 204s on the laps where we pitted or laps, the laps just after we pitted and we have been doing 202s and a 201.9 here. Now we do have Fly Garrick in front of us in the, the Supra, I think pitted at the end of lap 3. So I think we are a little bit faster than that driver and uh, but you're kind of able to use the slipstream here quite handily to just uh, make sure we're getting a little bit of a boost on our lap time. We weren't being held up by the driver. We are going to make an opportunistic move here though. The Spaniard and the Corvette, DJ Swift, just kind of gets Fly Garrick out of shape when we decide to sneak through as well. So it's now lap six. All the pit stops are made. Let's see how close or how far ahead of the four drivers we were kind of battling with at the beginning. And as you would expect, the undercut has worked quite successfully. We look at least five seconds ahead of the furthest driver ahead out of the four that we were directly racing, which is the French driver Mila here. Alex Towers, Kira and uh, Biggie Boy all a little bit further back and not really going to pose that much of a danger to us. Now as we come forward here to lap number nine, we were kind of just using the Spanish driver in front of us as a slipstream buddy. You can see that Mila has caught up to the back of our Jaguar. Alex Towers is way up the mountain. Biggie Boy a little bit further up as well. And I think Kira's had some kind of instant. But you can see that was the four drivers there that we were fighting against. Three of them have failed to be a threat to us. The French driver Mueller though has managed to use those fresh tyres in the second half of the race to catch up with us. But we have very tactically made sure we stayed behind DJ Swift so we have a nice slipstream. Coming down the, the Conrad Street here towards the chase on the last lap and because we've got that slipstream we should be able to hold off the Corvette here but we are on 8th uh, lap old tyres, I think the tyre wear was at times 8 for this one so technically my soft tyres have done 64 laps at this point. The French driver I think pitted at the end of lap 4 so significantly fresher tyres than we have but we're both on the soft tyres here, we're going to go defensive into Murray's. 
And we were down in P14 after all that madness into the first corner. And with a little bit of an extreme strategy, and again, they're getting a little bit of clean air, we're going to finish the race in P7. So it has worked out very nicely for us. Uh, I, I am very good on tyre wear, so again, when it comes to strategy, you sometimes have to weigh up whether you know, you've got to kind of make best use of your attributes, I guess. So tyre wear is definitely something I'm very strong on. Uh, maybe not a strategy that everybody could use, but as you can see, we were able to kind of use our attributes, kind of predict what was going to go on with the drivers we were driving against, make a big old undercut, and we were able to hold on at the end and fend off all four of those drivers and pick up a pretty decent result from what looked like a uh, pretty savage start and uh, possibly a disaster about to unfold. So race number two we're going to look at here, we're in the Hyundai and we've started the P9, no glitch start this time, we're on the medium tyres again, we've made up a couple of positions, uh, I think we passed DJ Swift down the straight and the driver behind us here, uh, the Dutch driver, they spun on their soft tyres and they're now coming back through the pack and making the overtake on me here. So I was pretty sure they were on soft tyres here so I wasn't going to fight that one too hard. And normally I would pit at this time but I wasn't happy with that track map. I could predict myself coming out behind some of those drivers. So I decided against my better will to stay out for one more lap on the medium tyres. I'd never actually gone on to lap number four on the medium tyres. But I thought, we've got this driver here on soft tyres in front of us. Let's just use their slipstream. We'll stay out for another lap. And uh, maybe that sort of traffic will clear a little bit when we kind of do make our pit stop here at the end of lap number four. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to peel off into the pits here at the end of lap number four. So we're in good position here. P7 on the medium tyres, moving on to the quicker tyre. We should be in course for a good result. But straight away, I can see that this one has not quite worked out as planned. So it looks like we've been undercut by the German driver in P11. When I had a look back, it turns out they'd actually pitted on lap number two. So they've made a big undercut on us, and now this uh, Corvette in front of us is on extremely old soft tyres. I think they're on the fifth lap on them. We again that uh, get involved in a little bit of a slowdown moment into the mountain, and that allows DJ Swift, who has already pitted as well, to then sneak by us as we start going down the mountain. So as I say, I've, again, I was streaming this race as well. I was very much saying that this race has uh, turned into a bit of a disaster because we are losing bucket loads of time uh, being stuck behind these drivers. We've got a queue of three drivers in front of us now. One of them's on five lap old soft tyres. DJ Swift has already pitted, but he's on older tyres than us. And I think the other car is obviously on old soft tyres as well because I do believe they pit at the end of this lap. So again, nowhere for us to go here. These drivers are fighting, blocking the whole road. You've just got to sit behind them, respect them. Don't go for any silly overtakes. One driver does peel off. So that's one driver out of the way. I've seen that Corvette though going for another lap. It's like, no, just no, come on. And we're going to be stuck behind that Corvette all the way up the mountain. As is DJ Swift, they're going side by side. We are losing back a loads of time here. We did a 201.195 on our outlap. We should really have been doing a 158 of some sort. So that's three seconds gone straight away. And again, we're still having to follow the Corvette here. Eventually do get around them on the exit of the chase. We've just got much better grip at this point. We've got DJ Swift in front of us. We're maybe slightly released now. We can maybe kind of start putting in some kind of sensible lap times, but with all the pit stops said and done, we're now in P10. Now remember, we pitted from P7 and we started from P9, so we're in a net loss at the moment. Hopefully though, well as it turns out, we do actually manage to make up a few positions as the race unfolds. You can see our first flying lap there was a 204.6, so it should have been a 201.5 probably on that first flying lap on the soft tyre. So the out lap and our first flying lap, we actually lost around about six seconds just because of where we emerged into the traffic. So we got by DJ Swift on lap number nine. We catch up with the German who pitted on lap two in the Jaguar. He surrenders that position down into the chase and then we actually make up a further position because the German punts off the Spaniard. So it turns out we do actually pick up a P6, which for P9 is not a disaster, but we definitely had the pace to easily get up to P4 in this one. So, a couple of examples there. Hopefully I've sort of been able to kind of demonstrate we have to consider so many things when it comes to strategy. 
The optimal strategy will not always work. Extreme strategies can work, but there's always a risk with strategy. Strategy sometimes works, sometimes it just doesn't work. And what I kind of quite like to do at the end of a race, if the strategy's not worked, is go back, watch the replay, and kind of try and understand in my head why the strategy never worked. How did I end up behind this car? Why did I not predict? Why did I not see the gap to kind of filter into? Why did why was the gap not there? What happened in the race that meant that if I pitted, I was going to come out into traffic? Uh, so it's a good little learning curve, you know. It's a good thing to kind of try and optimize your results to try and get on top of the strategy and understand strategy a little bit more deeply than just going for the optimal strategy. Because I have to be honest with you, I see far too many drivers just not getting the strategy right. They just don't seem to, they seem to have it in their head before the race starts that no matter what happens, they're pitting on lap four or they're pitting on lap five and they're just not taking into account some of the things going on around them, which would mean they would probably get better results. And it's not just sort of lower uh, rated drivers who get the strategy wrong or don't kind of maximize strategy. I see it from top split drivers as well. Fast, fast, fast drivers. Uh, they just, go into the race, they say at the beginning of the race, right, we're pitting at the end of lap four, and I'm like, how do you know you're going to be pitting at lap four? You have no idea what's going to happen over these first four laps. Uh, and I'm, it kind of, it doesn't annoy me, but it just makes me wonder, you know, you know, why people don't kind of look at strategy with a little bit more uh, emphasis and kind of understand the impact they can have on the race. Hopefully though, I've managed to kind of maybe open your eyes to strategy a little bit more. Uh, not just bored the pants off you for the last 16 minutes. Uh, and if you watch me streaming, maybe give you an insight into some of the decisions I make and why I go for some of the strategies that I go for. Uh, because there's, it's just one of these things, I'm always looking at what's going on around me in the race, what the drivers are doing, what I think is going to happen as uh, the race unfolds. And I'll be honest with you, I think I have pulled off over my GT Sport career some, some results that are just purely down to strategy and just being kind of maybe taking a little bit of a risk on the strategy uh, and there's nothing for me personally that's more satisfying than taking a risky strategy making the tyres last and uh, picking up a result that you would never have picked up if, if you'd went for just a traditional strategy so please do hit that like button please do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already let me know in the comments about some maybe some of, of your best strategic wins in the game uh, always keen to sort of hear a good strategy story i'll be honest with you uh, but until next time, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you on the next one. Goodbye now.